This is Coach Joseph Taylor, strength conditioning coach at Friendswood High School. This, this recording is for those whom it may concern regarding Trayvon Louis Hogan. I worked with Trayvon Hogan at LaPorte High School uh, his sophomore, junior, and senior year. How would you describe my playing style as an athlete? I think that last word there describes Trayvon's playing style uh, immensely. You know, athlete, kid played both sides of the ball, wide receiver, defensive back, um, incredibly versatile, smart, high football IQ, um, and, and very, very physical. You know, he's long, athletic, and uh, he's not afraid to mix it up. Kid is scrappy. Um, what separates Trayvon from his competition? Is, is his toughness. Um, Trayvon's senior year, he played basically the entire season on a pulled hamstring. Like, not just a tweak, like limping off the field, drive after drive. And we, we, couldn't, get, we couldn't get him to, to come out. I mean, he, he wouldn't do it. He, he refused to give up on his teammates. And man, he made it work. Um, even out there on, on one leg, basically, he still played really, really well. And, and was not a liability in any way. Um, his per perseverance is, is one of his, an outstanding quality that he has, um, and, he, and he loves the game, you know. Uh, for him to, to be where he is now, still just fighting and scrapping and, and trying to make his way in the sport that he loves, you know, is, is a testament to who he is as a person. Trayvon always used his image, in my experience, as an example for, for the younger kids around him and, and for the kids in his community. You know, Trayvon was never somebody, in my experience, who, um, you know, was partying, drinking, doing drugs. You know, he always handled his business in the classroom, you know, showed up on time and stayed late, did extra work because he, he wanted to be great. I, I couldn't recommend Trayvon Hogan enough to any program or coach that is interested in him because he's one of the finest young men I ever got a chance to coach. I always want to be successful in my own type of way. Like, I always go out of my way to swing them some beats. I don't party, don't drink, don't smoke, you know, stay to myself. I would rather go to the field, work out, you know, and perfect my craft than partying any other day, you know. Um, and that's just how it is because if you want to be the best, you got to stay consistent and do what you're meant to do. Honestly, I don't really have that many friends. I don't trust too many people. Like I said, I stay to myself. Uh, but probably one of the most biggest things I had to overcome was probably all the probably all the hatred from other people and the doubt. And it just like everybody just trying to, you know, try to talk down to me for no reason. And I just, I honestly never understood why. Because some of the people that talk down to me try to be my friend to this day. I'm just here to make sure everybody around me is being successful, you know what I'm saying? Making sure people got what they want. Because growing up, I didn't have the, mind you, I didn't have the best. I didn't have everything. Like, nowadays, people got this and that, you know, everybody got all this i've i've had you know like i had a rough lifestyle you know as a kid like i had to use hot water you know um to take a, to take a hot bath sometimes like i had to boil it on the stove and you know that's just that's just not right and it was like dang like other people have this you know my mom never got me this and that dad never got me this and that. i could never have the most fancy i wore probably one pair of school one pair of shoes to school two whole school year and you know I never really cared because I'm always grateful for everything in my life I'm grateful for everything I have because you gotta understand everybody's parents this is our this is their first time living and doing this so it's like I I understand this is my mom and dad's first time being a parent this is their first time having a lifestyle just like me it's their first time living on this world just like I am you know so it's like I understand we can't always have it you know we can't always have everything you know so it's like I've never took anything for granted. Never. I've never, I was never, you know, ungrateful for anything in my life. Um, you know? And it's just, it's me seeing my, me, me seeing my mother cry, you know, and 
me, you know, me seeing her not eat for certain days because she wants to make sure we eat, it kind of hurts me, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, it really do hurt me, you know what I'm saying? And it's just, I just want to pro provide for my mom. I'm not even going to lie to you. Like, I just want to provide for her and my family because she's been working too. Like, she, my mom doesn't even want to buy her any. She don't even want to buy any clothes. Like, like you know what I'm saying? She don't even want to buy anything. It's just, she's worried about us. She's making sure we're first, you know? And that's, as a mother, that's her job. But at the same time, it's like me seeing that as the oldest kind of hurts me. And I honestly, when I tell you, I don't have any feelings for anybody. I don't have no, like, I genuinely don't have no feelings. Like, I'm really, like, cold-hearted. But, like, for my mother, like, anything for her, you know, it's just, man. I really just want the world to just look at me and look at somebody that can look up to, you know. I My idol, probably my mom, you know. You know, I have a dad in my life also, but probably my mom because she works like she, she, yeah, just so much. I don't even, yeah, so much. I don't like, you know what I'm saying, get into it, but, you know. But same time, I'm, I'm my own hero at the same time because it's something that I've been through, so that I've seen her go through, and I don't want to see her go through that again. So I just want the world to look at me as somebody they can respect, you know look up to me and be like oh y'all to be like him like you know i just want them to feel like when they look at me they can they, they like they, they can feel welcome like wholesome i want like wholesome you know um i don't want anybody to ever look at me and not because you know majority of these athletes verify on instagram whatever they have people i have people in my dms all the time I want somebody feel like they DM me, I will reply, you know, like somebody they want to talk to, you know what I'm saying, I will, I'm willing to, you know what I'm saying, talk to them, maybe not give out my phone number, but you know, like, it's just, it's just so much, bro, honestly. I'm probably the most humblest person you will ever know. I don't really speak a lot. I don't speak at all, actually. Like, I, I really, you know, fun fact, I hate presentations in class. Honestly, like I don't like going in front of people and speaking, but I mean I have to if I will, you know But I don't really speak to people. I don't really talk mess on the football field because you know I love the game so much. Mind you, I can't I used, to, I, used to, I used to talk real crazy on the football field But I love the game so much. I wouldn't want to tell nobody else you suck like, you know, you suck this and that because We we, we really here for the same reason like you want when I want to win you want to buy your mom a house, I'm buying my mom a house, you know? So it's like... Sometimes I look in the mirror and I don't even recognize who I am anymore. And sometimes, like, you know... Um, you don't really meet too many genuine people anymore. People will be your friends because of this or that. Or, you know, it's just... I don't know, bro. So many fake people in the world, like... It's like you have snakes in your grass, you know? It's like the devil on your shoulder at all times. As long as you got God, as long as you have God in your life, I'm telling you... Everything will be all right. Like I pray every day, you know, God, that God give me out of this situation that I'm in, you know. Um, and I wouldn't be here without God in the first place. Due to my injury, mind you, due to my injury in high school, plus in college, you know, and being transfer portal and everything, you know, I had to. Me first, I was supposed to go to Wyoming, right? Wyoming University. Um, I was there for the summer. Probably like for a, maybe a week. I don't say a few days, but one of them, you know, week, few days, same thing. I had to stop going to school due to family issues. I'm thinking I'm not gonna go to school anymore. Never, I'm not gonna go to school anymore. Got picked up by Houston, boom, got injured, you know, and it's just, it's just so much because like, why me? Like, why am I going to this? I had like, why can't I play a full season, healthy, you know? Like, why just, why just, why can't I? High school. Broken, broken fingers, broken wrists, two pulled hamstrings, boom, you know, collarbone broke. Got to college, it's like you know, I'm injured. It's just like, why me? Like, why can't I play? Like, and I don't know. And I'm honestly leaving up to God, you know. It's just, I don't know, man. And I've been playing football since I was five years old. You know, I always got, I always got picked on because of my not really picked on, really, but I also got like. I would say picked on, yeah, picked on because of my size, you know, because I was real skinny. I get made fun of because I was little, you know. People try to, like, you know what I'm saying, bully me on the football field. And, you know, some of it got to my head, you know. Some of it got to my head. I was younger. I was a little high head. Most of it got to my head. But then when I had, you know, talked to my coach about it, you know, he just, he just told me, like, don't let anybody get a reaction out of me. Don't let them get a reaction because at the end of the day, they're winning. At the end of the day, and he told me, 
football is not about how you play it's about what you do 